Come on, I gotta get this last one. This is the last ship. I wanna get it. And <laughs> yes! That was the last ship clenched the win. That is the best game I have ever had. Oh my goodness. That is absolutely the best game I've ever had in World of Warships. That was insane. Look at this. I mean, 250,000 doubloons. 3725 XP, 187 XP, 3725 XP. Oh lord seven kills i have never done that many kills before look at the flooding the sits oh my gosh the torps it's just beautiful the accolades love it insane how do i do it compared to the rest of the team oh my goodness 2483 more than doubling the second place guy on my team just decimated the other team that was insane tier four furutaka cruiser japanese crazy all right, super great game. Question is though, how did I get there? Well, to answer that, we have to go backwards in time because to get to that tier four game, it all started with the tier one cruiser Shikuma. That's right, folks, we're back. This is Run47R bringing you the World of Warships Legends. That is the game on console. This is its first look. You're getting a combination review of the Tier 1 Japanese cruiser, Chikuma. You're also getting a walkthrough as I am learning my way through this process. You are too. And uh, other than seeing the Founders Pack in there with some premiums that came with it, um, this is really a default look at the game itself. So it's really a look from the very beginning. So I invite all of you to go ahead and continue following this uh, series here as we learn the game itself. Again, we're talking about the Chikuma, quick background knowledge, which I find to be very interesting because it does affect the gameplay. And again, it is a game, but based on history, is that this is the second line of cruisers developed completely by the Japanese. This uh, Chikuma here really came out with the uh, turbine engines, the larger six inch gun. But what really stands out is that this was the protected cruisers. In other words, it is a second class cruiser. What does that mean? in English, it's really designed to be a scout and also a flotilla leader uh, as the uh, command and control for a group of destroyers. Jumping over to a look of the ships, again focusing on the Japanese line here, you can see that currently the World of Warships only goes up to tier 7. Uh, with that said, there are a couple of lines with the uh, cruisers, the destroyers, battleships, and so forth. But again, we'll go ahead and see the big picture down the road. This is just a quick glance at the things to come. All right, now before we take this thing out to sea and see what it can do, just a quick glance, you can see there's only one upgrade package before we get to the Tier 2 cruiser called the Tendryu. Be pretty darn quick to get there. Next on the scene is a close examination of what that package really is. It is the Type 1 Mod 2 Gunfire Control System. What does that mean? It increases the firing range by 10%. The main battery firing range becomes 10 kilometers. Now, what exactly is this ship firing? It is firing the uh, the HE shells, right, uh, only. And it has a reload time of 12 seconds. The maximum shell damage is 2,200. Chance to set fire, 14%. Again, firing range, wind bolstered all the way up, 10.5 kilometers. The only consumables that this ship offers is the damage control party level 1. Uh, what that's going to go ahead and do is, uh, you know, five second uh, consumable duration. The reload time is going to be 60 seconds, right? The cooldown rate. And this is going to go ahead and be a combination for whether you're on fire or you want to repair damage to your vessel. Continuing on a look of the loadouts, uh, you also have the opportunity to put in some boosters. I'm not highlighting those. I will talk about those in a later time because, frankly, I really don't use them. Whole nother discussion for another time. But what is kind of important, well, not kind of, very important, is camouflage. Um, there are four flavors that they have to choose from, and we'll go ahead and look at those now. Camouflage is called Type 1, Type 2, Type 3, or Type 4, and really those are just broken into the different types of assistance they can give you. So Type 1 is going to go ahead and have a C detectability range of negative 4.5%, so you can go ahead and hide better. Type 2 is going to go ahead and have an incoming fire dispersion of plus 4.5%, meaning that when someone is shooting at you, you have made it harder for them to be accurate as those shells are coming in at you. 
Now the type three camouflage, it's a higher rate, right? So it's C detectability range uh, is negative 3% with the addition of an incoming fire dispersion of plus 3%. So not as great on an individual level as type one and type two, but the benefit of having two of them, right? You have better camouflage. However, it's not as great of a value as if you were doing only one area. And type four is gonna go ahead and be the best of the best. And that is gonna be the negative 4.5% for the detectability range. And then the additional 4.5% for the incoming fire dispersion. But again, type four, the best of all the camouflage. The last thing to take a look at when examining your ships is the stats. Now the stats are broken down into the survivability rate, which is at a level of 13. Uh, the individual information for the Chikuma, hit points being 13,100. The armor overall ranges from a six to 102 millimeters. Next up is the artillery rated as a one. Artillery really means the guns, right? So the main guns, the main battery, 152 millimeter, 41st year type. It is the eight by one, 152 millimeter, firing range of 10.5 kilometers, reload time 12 seconds. The 180 degree turn time is 20 seconds. Then they go ahead and share with you that the HE shell, maximum HE shell damage, 2200, chance to set fire 14%. Again, very similar to what we saw when we look at the individual loadout. AA defense is at a level one. Anti-aircraft is really what AA means. I'm sure most of you know that. This is the 6.5 millimeter third year type. It is two by one. Their seven millimeter is the size of that ammunition. The average damage per second is two. Firing range is one kilometer. So those incoming planes will be taken down by this portion of the stats. Maneuverability is one of the biggest parts I believe is important to a ship. This is at a level of 51. Maximum speed is 26 knots, turning circle radius 530 meters, rudder shift time 3.8 seconds. Focus on the rudder shift time. Uh, that would go ahead and tell you how quickly you can go ahead and change directions and you know go left, right, port, starboard, that sort of thing. The last aspect of the stats would be the concealment at a level of 81. This ship's detectability range by sea is 8.2 kilometers, detectability range by air, five kilometers, and then it says guaranteed detectability range, two kilometers, meaning that no matter what's going on, once you are at two kilometers, you are guaranteed to be detected. All right, jumping into a game, again, for future games, you're not gonna be seeing me spending time on this area, but again, this is the walkthrough, right? This is the very first game, you need to know this. Uh, you may have seen that as that loading screen was displayed, it was showing us that this is an artificial intelligence game. They really funnel you through that kind of uh, force tutorial aspect as you're starting to play this game. Once you get past that first loading screen, you will see this loading screen where the game is actually loaded and you have the opportunity, as you can see in the lower left-hand corner, to click the button that will allow you to see your ships, the map, that sort of thing. Um, and you can leave this screen. You can see the game or the battle ex itself will be starting in as that countdown says, 14, 13, 12, etc. cetera. Um, and so that's what this is displaying. All right, super fast forward, jumping over to the actual uh, game itself. You can see here the battle is now starting, taking a look at the map. This is really the layout. You can see the reds, uh, the blues, uh, the green, of course, being yourself. So I can go ahead and let you know what's going on here. Really important to do this when you are playing these battles. Take a look at the map. See who you're going up against. Know your ships. But really, it's the map. I think that's really the most important part because you have to plan ahead. Uh, these are not turning on a dime types of ships. You kind of have to plan ahead. Um, see the obstacles, think about lines of sight and all that kind of fun stuff. I know a lot to throw at you all at once. Let's go ahead and jump into the game itself. Again, uh, this tutorial, right? Look at this. It's teaching how to steer, speed up, slow down. Um, so that's in the lower right hand corner. You got your AB for going faster and slower. I'm going to go ahead and click the, uh, the left button there. Well, I'm saying it, but it's happening really fast and that allows me to kind of Take the uh, first person view, a uh, real close up of the ship itself. And then when you click it back, it's kind of that uh, over the shoulder third person, which is pretty much how the only way I play this game. Also too, you'll notice there's orange circles uh, kind of at the horizon, if you will, and they're kind of drifting back and forth, left and right. That is basically each individual gun's position, uh, and it'll be rotating to try to look in the direction that you're asking it to look. When it turns into a white circle, that is indicating that that particular gun, individual, or multiple guns are ready to fire. And it's uh, kind of nice because that pie crust is broken into chunks, right? So like right now, um, you know, when you're looking at it, if it was one circle, it's one gun. If you see a circle and the pie crust is broken into, say, four, four dashes, right? Then that means it's four guns. So you can really see the individual guns uh, ready to fire there. 
Um, also, too, when it goes when it's time to fire, uh, you right trigger. But you can either alpha strike by double clicking, right, and sending everything all at once, or you can just, you know, click, 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 and then send individual guns. So really important to, uh, to know when and how to use your weapons. As a side note, I am just kind of moving forward, uh, really letting people uh, take their positions, and I'm going to try to assist where I can. But again, in all honesty, in this particular uh, game, I'm really just kind of getting the feel for it. I have played this on the, uh, the PC in the past, so I have half a clue. Um, another thing to point out, too, again, from a walkthrough through perspective is you'll notice that there is a large circle. Uh, if you look in the upper left-hand corner, there's a map, there's a large circle. One of the circles is what you can see, people, right? That's your visibility. They're in, within your range. Now, it doesn't matter. That's not taking into account their... their hiding behind smoke or their camouflage or whatnot, but that is your typical ring of what where you can see things. There is another ring. Uh, sometimes it's the same, sometimes it's different, and that is going to be how far you can fire based on those guns. So if you had torpedoes, right, and you switched over to those, you would have a different sized ring versus the size of your guns. And also, too, thinking about uh, you know when you can be detected as well. But we'll see that in the higher up because there's more things released and available for you to see. The higher tiers you go up, um, it's not really the tiers, it's more like the longer you've been playing because this is really based on how much you have been playing as an individual, uh, which is your own uh, score or uh, level, if you will. Not the ship's level, but you as a player's level. And that's how the system knows how to release those force tutorials. Now here with the HEs, all I can do uh, is keep firing at them. Uh, HE, rule of thumb, you really want those to land not on the hull. You want them to land on the deck. Um, or any of the uh, structures. Uh, the reason being is that the HEs are good for causing fires and for taking out uh, guns, right? Or doing damage uh, to components, if you will. It's not really about penetrating. Uh, that would be for an armor-piercing shell. So keeping on the move, again, uh, your mileage may vary, but keeping on the move for me is uh, pretty key. Uh, I'm pretty much never going to stay stationary. Man, I wanted to get that kill so bad. Um, and again, you'll notice too, a uh, perfect example to another thing to share with you. Look at this. That indication near my ship, it's saying, hey, warning, you're going to run into the land. So when you're dancing around, it's kind of funny because your worst enemy, really, I think, is the land, uh, the islands, um, the coasts. That's going to be challenging, not really the ships, because if you're on the move, you have half a chance. If you run into something and you're stuck, oh my God, it takes forever to really get un, uh, unstuck. But we'll talk about that more later. The other thing I was going to share with you, and again, it's a lot of tips, a lot of things that I've uh, learned over time here, is not only situational awareness, common, common sense applies to, to any, any game or, or any situation in your life, but also, too, when it comes to ships themselves, um, you're really going to want to position your ship. Oh, there you go. See, look at that. I got so tunnel visioned. Luckily, everyone sucks and it's an AI, but... Um, Man, look at that broadside of the enemy. That's so bad. <laughs> Anywho, my first game, um, really getting used to the, the feelings there, but we'll talk more about it. Um, you know, but it's really, uh, really important about how you position your ship as you are uh, fighting. So here, nothing to brag about. Um, you know, 31 uh, hits, uh, one sunk, two fires. You've got your uh, total damage there, um, and, and I'm coming out pretty low. Again, as I you know alluded to earlier, this is not only a tier one, but really the this Japanese line at tier one is not the cruiser that you think it was designed to be. This is really supposed to be more of a scout. It's not really an in-your-face uh, battler. And when I say in-your-face, meaning uh, as compared to other other uh, you know cruisers. Meanwhile, you can see here I have went up from a level one to a level two as a player. Now they're walking me through some more tutorials here teaching me uh, the ins and outs of the game. So as you progress, they're showing you here that you can upgrade your ship. We have 369 XP for the Tier 1 Chikuma. Um, I'll go ahead and hover over that, make sure that I'm, I'm located there, uh, you know, activate, uh, take a look at, um, you know, the upgrades that are available. You can see I've, I've met that requirement. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on it. it. has that nice plus symbol showing that, hey, this is available for you. Now I can apply that type 1 modification to increase my, my gunnery range. 
Um, and again, this is the only modification that you can do to this ship. Again, it's a tier one, right? So you're gonna be here for five seconds and you're gonna move on to tier two. So let's go ahead and try to get up to the tier two. All right, activating time travel. Gonna go ahead and quickly blast through this here. And now we are back into the game here. You can see I've pressed the A. So even though it's still loading, I've got 20 some odd seconds until the game starts. And it allows you to uh, kind of assess the situation. Highly recommend it. Um, and again, I'm just kind of checking out the graphics, playing around here. Um, it's a pretty, yeah, you know, I enjoy the visuals on this game. It's pretty, pretty darn cool. So key points again, let's go ahead and circle back. Um, who's on your team? What ships, right? Where's your position? What are the land masses? What's the objective? Um, in this case, we're trying to take out all the other ships or capture their flag, right? So what are you going to do? Uh, what is your ship capable of doing? Um, you know, what's its role, right? So play play to the ship's strengths. Um, so here I am just kind of cruising along. Um, and, and at this level, by the way, uh, the traverse of the turrets are not that crazy. So typically cruisers are very reasonable in their turret traverse. So um, that's not much of a problem. Uh, meanwhile, what is that? Something happened uh, from, from the right. So I think, could be wrong, I think uh, somebody was messing around and shot at me on my own team, but you don't take damage. Uh, friendly fire is off uh, in the PC uh, version. It is on. Um, so there you go. And again, they're just really just telling you, uh, going through that tutorial, explaining what the, uh, they call it, sectors on the central circle represent the, yep, there you go, went away, uh, the guns and stuff. Lower left-hand corner, um, as we're cruising along here, you can see I only have one consumable. Um, and they're forcing some uh, tutorial notes there as it pops up on the screen. That stuff goes away uh, as you get higher up in the levels. Uh, thank goodness. Um, but this ship here, you can see 13,100 for HP. You've got one consumable activated by the directional pad, uh, moving it to the left when applicable. We have the high explosive. Uh, no chance to change ammunition because it only comes with one ammunition. I don't like to be broadside, but I'm just trying to continue through. Uh, I don't want to reveal any uh, citadels here. Um, Citadels being the very tasty things that enemies want to shoot at, which would be things like uh, your your engine room, uh, your stored ammo, things like that. So anytime it is uh, below guns uh, and in the engine area, those are below the waterline. So if you can land a, a penetrating shot uh, just at the waterline level, fantastic, super tasty. Uh, hard to penetrate though with these HEs. Again, this is the only thing that we have. And you can see here, continually staying on the move. Um, some would argue, and it's a whole nother discussion when we talk about battleships uh, that I was reading up on uh, in the forums, but uh, someone was complaining about uh, running away from battles and really uh, focus on what I'm doing is constantly keeping at the maximum range of my guns. I wanna keep them far away as possible, keep my guns in the action. Um, so while I'm still staying relevant at a distance, I'm also at the same time thinking about positioning my ship such that if they are going to fire at me, am I giving them a large or a smaller target? Am I angling my armor or am I making myself, uh, you know, <laughs> more sinkable, more uh, damageable? Uh, some things can't be prevented, like HE is going to... Uh, you know, make you unhappy no matter what, but uh, there are things that you can do to decrease the, uh, the damage that you're going to be taking. Another thing I would point out too, um, because, you know, as an individual game, there's nothing really too much to, to point out um, because the Chikuma is just the Chikuma, but what you can learn from is look at that ship that just got wrecked. You notice that the engine was kind of doing this sparkly, uh, sputtery stuff out of the smokestacks. That means that the engine was damaged. It lost propulsion. The ship that I'm uh, shooting at right now good thing to learn uh, what early on in the game is that always look at the smokestacks so when you see the smokestacks it helps you figure out the speed of a ship uh, knowing the speedy speed of a ship you can uh, go ahead and lead your target accordingly utilizing the reticle uh, that you see here where and again we're only for the well for today's conversation we're only concerned about uh, horizontal uh, issues right left right and you can use those spacers there those marks to really lead the target um, with that smokestack you can see he was going pretty fast he was underway uh, at maximum uh, as it would appear uh, that guy he's hauling too most people do cruise around at max speed um, so my eight guns uh, I'm continually trying to maximize uh, whenever possible um, as many guns as possible which of course it's a catch-22 right 
if you broadside somebody, you have the most guns that you can bring to bear, but of course you're making yourself vulnerable. So similar to, to boxing or any other real life event, every, uh, every time you attack, you open yourself up. But moving on, down below, uh, you can see here's another important piece to learn during this walkthrough uh, to help you out there is, is the ship, right? You can see the outline of your ship, and it's turning around, kind of like on a compass. You can see also, too, the guns, uh, where they're pointing. Some are white, some are yellow. Uh, so indicating white, uh, ready to fire, right? Um, if they're yellow, they're not ready to fire for whatever reason, uh, either not on target or they're out of, uh, out of ammo. All right, well, that battle ended. Super nothing to brag about, but uh, just doing the grind, getting enough XP, um, and in this case also, too, just kind of triggering uh, the tutorial to allow me to move up. Uh, the sooner I get out of this tutorial in my mind, the <laughs> happier I'll be. I mean, I got a whopping 123. You saw that HE at a tier one for this particular cruiser was so, so not, uh, not exciting. Uh, very little damage there. Um, eight pens did not help there. And then now I went up from a level two to a level three. Now they're introducing to you the concept of the ship tech trees. Got a little reward there. Fantastic. So they're doing a nice job, in my opinion, of walking you through the game uh with these um these little bits here especially when you are brand new looking forward to getting out of the artificial intelligence games and into multiplayer but uh, on the way to do that i'm able now to access for what appears to be thirteen thousand doubloons i can purchase the tenryu which is the tier two japanese cruiser went ahead and purchased that as you can see there and boom it's ready to go. Kind of a quick sneak peek, right? You can see here there are two packages that we can purchase throughout that journey. But for now, that is it. And we'll go ahead and catch up with that next cruiser in the next video. Super appreciate everybody hanging out with me. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.